You are striving for advanced, flexible and safe inverters? Sounds like you should get to know the new three-phase. SunGrow's next generation of PV inverters providing maximum freedom. Before starting the installation, please read the safety instructions in our manual. You need a suitable place for the inverter. This means it should be a room where no flammable materials or gases are stored. The wall must be fireproof and able to withstand a force of four times the weight of the inverter. Furthermore, the inverter should not be exposed to direct sunlight, rain or snow. All screws and plugs required for the installation are already included in the delivery. You only need your own tools like screwdrivers. And off we go! Luckily you don't need a spirit level. SunGrow has it integrated in the mounting plate. Before you start drilling, you should make sure that there are no wires running through the wall that you could damage. Take your drill with the 10mm drill bit and drill at least 70mm deep into the wall at the marked points. The dowels for mounting the inverter on the wall are included in the delivery. You will also need a cordless screwdriver for attaching the mounting plate. The required screws are part of the delivery. Due to the light weight, the inverter can easily be mounted by a single person. For the lift-out protection, you need a cross screwdriver to fix the two M4 fixing screws and washers. Before the inverter can be connected, the AC home circuit breaker must be disconnected, the cables must be de-energized and in perfect condition. Before installation, make sure by measuring that the cables are really voltage-free. You will find all cable requirements and wire sizes necessary for commissioning in our manual. Furthermore, you have to set the DC switch on the left side of the inverter from on to off. Now let's connect the inverter to ground. There is a grounding terminal at the bottom of the inverter, connected to the general grounding of the house. We start with the AC plug. Because of our handy plugs, you don't have to open the inverter for installation. Simply pull the cable through the individual components and screw them together with M4 screws. Make sure that all cables are fixed to the respective terminals. When all cables are in place, push the terminal strip into the housing of the plug. When you hear a click, the terminal strip is properly engaged. Last but not least, you have to tighten the fasteners. The smaller versions of the new 3-phase up to 12 kW come with a newly designed AC connector. The assembly works screw-free. Only for final fixing of the connector, one screw is required. Quick and easy. Connect the AC connector to the inverter. Now let's take a look at the DC connector. After stripping the insulation, you have to attach a crimp contact. For this, you have to check the polarity because each pole has different terminals that need to be crimped. The polarity is marked on the inverter. Then push the cable into the insulating sleeve until it snaps into place. Screw it and that's it. Check again that the polarity corresponds to the imprint. The finished plugs only fit to the appropriate connections. The amount of DC inputs varies depending on the power range of the inverter. In the next step, we will set up the communication port. Via this port you can connect the smart energy meter or the communication cable for daisy chain mode. Let's start with the energy meter, which is needed for the feed-in power function. Remove approximately 4-5 to five centimeters of the cable sheath of the communication cables. Then strip approximately 7-10 to 10 millimeters of the inner cables. If necessary, you may have to fit the cables with end sleeves before you push them into the plug. The smart meter is connected to the ports A2 and B2. The other end of the cable needs to be connected to the smart meter itself. Mount the meter on a DIN rail and connect the communication cable RS485A to pin 21 and RS485B to pin 22. Check the user manual for the connection of the power cables. Now let's jump back to the communication port. A maximum number of five inverters can be connected in daisy chain mode. If necessary, 
you may have to fit the cables with the end sleeves before you push them into the plug. Connect the cables to the ports A1 and B1 at the RS485 interface of the inverter. The first inverter in daisy chain mode can be connected to the RS485 port of the logger. The cable between two inverters should be no more than 10 meters. When daisy chain mode is being used, the Ynet S can't be used as communication device. Plug everything together, screw it and plug it in. For commissioning, you have to connect the new Ynet module. It combines Ethernet and Wi-Fi in one port and is part of the delivery scope. If you want to use Ethernet, simply unscrew the swivel nut from the Ynet S and thread the network cable through it. Insert the RJ45 plug into the plug connector until you hear a click. Screw everything together and plug the device in. If you want to use Wi-Fi, it's even easier. Simply connect the module to the inverter. That's it! The installation is done. Now it's time for commissioning. First, you have to set the DC switch of the inverter to the on position to connect the inverter to the PV generator. Next, you have to switch on the AC circuit breaker. A look at the LED light tells you if everything works properly. If the light shines continuously blue, the inverter is ready for use. If this is not the case, please refer to the manual where you will find a breakdown of the different light signals. When connected, the Ynet module takes some minutes to fully boot. To finalize the setup, you need to download the iSolar Cloud app. You may find a detailed commissioning video on our YouTube channel.